So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our first follow-up Friday of the new school year. Uh, many of you joined us during the spring for our weekly Tune In Tuesday and follow-up Friday series of webinars, which we offered between March and June. And they were really so well received that the Long Island Arbor has decided to continue, continue offering these webinars on a monthly basis to support the ongoing remote learning that we know is taking place in many of our Long Island school districts. So we are very happy that you're able to take part in today's session. For those of you who we haven't met, hello everybody, I'm Kelly Cordero. Hello everyone, I'm Erica Flores, and we are both resource specialists with NYSA's Long Island Arburn, which is the Regional Bilingual Education Resource Network. Uh, Kelly and I will be co-hosting today's session on Bitmoji Classroom in Action. Um, and at this time, we would like to ask everyone to sign into the chat with your first and last name, your position, and your district to verify your attendance. So we'll give you a few minutes to do that now. And before we jump into our presentations, uh, we just want to share some information with you about how to access Long Island Arbor resources. So because we are a free resource, everything we do is in support of Long Island districts and bilingual and ENL programs. So we wanna make sure that you are able to access everything that we have to offer. So first, if you haven't already, we invite you to visit our website, join our listserv, to receive regulatory updates and guidance, as well as notifications about upcoming professional development events. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, where we'll also share resources, highlight best practices, and where if you're new to Twitter, you can get an idea of who you can follow on Twitter to build your virtual professional learning community just by checking out some of the people that we're following. Uh, we are also excited to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find our growing library of recordings of past webinars um, and also instructional snapshots. So again, um, I'm just going to ask everyone to please be sure that you're muted um, and simply use the chat feature or the raise your hand feature if you wish to contribute anything. So. Today, our objectives for, for this session are to visit um, several different Bitmoji classrooms on Long Island, uh, just to learn how teachers are integrating Bitmoji into their hybrid and remote spaces to support instruction in a meaningful way. So if you had joined us um, for our Bitmoji classroom Tune In Tuesday session earlier this month, Erica and I shared with you our Bitmoji workspace, which integrated you know, different aspects of our professional and individual identities. Um, some of the different resources that we use on a daily basis, some little personal effects. We also categorized the potential benefits of a well-crafted Bitmoji classroom based on research and um, different resources that we've been reviewing. We categorized these benefits into three distinct areas, which we called the three eyes of integrating face-to-face -face and remote instruction. So during today's session, we'll highlight authentic representations of these benefits in Bitmoji classrooms around Long Island, which is really our favorite feature of follow-up Fridays, that it gives us the opportunity to really shine a spotlight on some amazing Long Island educators. So our findings um, were echoed in this recently uh, released Edutopia article, which supports educators as they make critical decisions about what to include in their Bitmoji classroom to ensure that um, you know, they are culturally responsive and inclusive of all students. Um, you will notice that in this classroom that was created by Nadia Javaria, um, she demonstrated several elements of cultural responsiveness um, as indicated here by you know, the flags, um, the different posters, and even the literature that she is highlighting in her classroom. So this is a great article and it suggests that educators ask, ask themselves five critical questions when they're creating a virtual classroom. So, you know, thinking about what is the learning purpose of my virtual classroom? 
what meaningful objects can I include? Of course, these are not decorations. We want everything to be intentional and meaningful. How can I make my virtual classroom accessible for cognitively and linguistically diverse learners? How can I make my virtual classroom inviting and nurturing for racially and culturally diverse learners? And how will I express create creativity without an overwhelming time investment? Because we all know we are pulled in so many different directions, especially now trying to navigate all of our different instructional modes. So these are some essential questions that were identified within this Edutopia article. And many of these questions were addressed during our Tune In Tuesday session, which you can watch on our YouTube channel. And they're also represented within the classrooms that we'll be visiting today. So let's get started with our Bitmoji classroom tour. First, we are traveling to the Long Beach School District. Our first Long Beach teacher who's joining us today is Ashley Gary. Ashley teaches grades nine through 12 ENL at Long Beach High School. She also co-teaches a Regents level earth science course and a living environment course. Ashley is currently teaching in a face-to-face -face setting and we want to welcome Ashley. We're so happy you could be here with us today. Uh, Ashley, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You Thank are you so great. Much. So Ashley, we're going to make you, oh, did you want us to, to share our slides for this? I can share it. Okay, fine. So we're gonna make you a co-host now so that you can start sharing. Hey everyone. Uh, okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can, Ashley. Thank you. You could see it? It was there a second ago and oh, there, there it is. is again. Great. Okay, perfect. Hi everyone. My name is Ashley Gary. Um, so over the quarantine, I actually made my Google Classroom um, my virtual um, Bitmoji classroom. And the great thing about it is that you're able to edit it um, each week you can change things. So in my classroom, I have um, like a Google Translate, um, Google Earth. Sorry, I wish I could go over it. Can you guys see that now? We see it again now. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so I have hyperlinked all of my um, pictures on here. So I have Google Translate, I have my Google Classroom. Um, I have inspirational videos in English and Spanish for students to watch if they need a little bit of motivation um, or just to take a second and think about all the things that they're grateful for. Um, because I teach science, I also have the reference table and National Geographic easy mm -hmm. for students to access. Um, I have my epic books and for each class that I teach, I have um, the class code for them right on my classroom. Um, one more thing I started doing during quarantine was creating um, an SL journal. So I actually link the SAL journal in my classroom as well. So students are able to, um, you know, get different ways that they um, write about their, their mental health. Like how are they doing today? Um, are you able to see the SEL journal? Um, we're having a little, it looks like it's trying to pull it up and I th think it's still processing. Okay. If you can't pull it up, we also have it in, okay, there it is, it's coming up. Okay, perfect. So I have this linked, um, this just you know, this changes, I don't do the same journal all the time, but mm -hmm. this is just an example of an SEL journal um, I would use as a prompt for my students. So when they're home or virtual, they can access this document. And last but not least, I'll go through my work emoji classroom. Um, I also posted some yoga videos, um, free work videos for students to use. Mm -hmm. um, so they can click on meditate, click on Beach Body on Demand was doing free classes for students. Orange Theory posts free at home workouts. So I had this as a way to motivate students um, when they were at home. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. We just wanted to point out um, where we saw Ashley making connections to the three eyes that we had that we were talking about earlier. Um, 
the three eyes of integrating face-to-face -face and remote instruction. So first, the hyperlink tools on the bookshelf, of course, support student independence, um, the social emotional learning journal that Ashley took us through. It provides students with strategies to encourage reflection and self-regulation of emotions. So all of these ways that it really empowers students to um, take charge of their learning, of their, their wellness, um, those are great features. Um, I really also loved the gym. It was a great way to offer um, social emotional learning support and to promote student well being. So, um, you know, especially during our current instructional landscape where we know that um, maybe not our students aren't getting as much physical activity as a month once might have um, being in front of a computer for, you know, so much time. Um, so again, thank you so much, Ashley, for, for sharing all of that. Um, Ashley, there was a request in the chat um, to share. Oh, there she is. You did it all Ashley right. already shared her slides. So fast. Yes. 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 Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. So um, Ashley, is this your first year using Bitmoji Classroom? So I started using the Bitmoji Classroom during quarantine, so I guess in April, I really mm. started using it. Um, and I think it's a great way that you can constantly edit it. So it's like a constant live document. Um, mm -hmm. So once you get a resource, you could add a slide and add a slide and add a picture, add a hyperlink. Um, so it's great, it, it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. right. And now are, are other colleagues in your building also incorporating Bitmoji Classroom into, um, I, I, I see that you use Google Classroom, is that right? Yeah, so we use Google Classroom. I know a lot of teachers use their Bitmoji Classroom week by week, so they'll post the weekly schedule. Um, this really helps if students are absent due to sickness or mm -hmm. other reasons. They have this document, they know what to expect them, and all the information in one place. Great, thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions for Ashley? Um, you can, you know, throw it in the chat if you do. Um, and, you know, also feel free to reach out to her after today's presentation. Um, you'll see at the bottom of these slides here, um, you'll see her email address there. So if you um, have any questions, I'm sure she would be uh, very, very gracious and, and be, be able to answer them for you. Yes, thank you yes. so much, Ashley. Of course, thank you. And of course, you know, just pointing out again, uh, just the nature of Bitmoji Classroom in providing such uh, powerful visual support where it's a great way to organize resources that students can easily identify and then access. So um, that's just one of the many things I love about Bitmoji Classroom. So up next, we would like to welcome Patricia Foley from the Seaford School District. Patricia teaches Spanish for grades nine through 12 at Seaford High School, currently in a hybrid format with both remote and face-to-face -face students attending concurrently, which of course for many of us has been an added challenge throughout our Long Island districts for our teachers. Patricia, we know how difficult it is to get away during the, the instructional day, so we are so happy to have you here with us. Uh, we're going to make you a co-host now so you can share from your screen. Yep. And we're going to hand the presentation over to you now so you can tell us about your Bitmoji classroom experience. Hi. Uh, you Actually, you don't have to share. You don't have to okay. make me a co-host because we'll, I guess we'll just keep we'll it. We'll just go through ours. Sure. Is that okay? Um, so hi, every, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so just like Ashley had mentioned, I feel like I kind of got into the, the Bitmoji craze during the quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of jealous because we are not a Google school in Seaford and I felt like everything that I was following on social media was all with like Google Slides and, and how you can make a Bitmoji classroom and put it into a Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. um, so in Seaford, we use Microsoft Teams as a platform. So I was actually very determined to figure out a way to make a Bitmoji Classroom um, using the Microsoft version. Um, so I was able to do it off of PowerPoint. Um, and this is and one example of one of my Bitmoji Classrooms that I have. Um, so just like you had mentioned, I do teach Spanish grades uh, nine through 12. Um, and I put a lot of things that I feel like are culturally responsive to things that I teach in class um, on an academic level, as well as with some things that I do with social emotional. So this was one of the um, actual Bitmoji classrooms that I had given my students this year. Um, more just kind of like a little like welcome um, uh, screen just to show them what, what my virtual expectations are just because again, we are in a hybrid model. So I am mm -hmm. teaching 
both groups simultaneously at the same time. Um, but there are like, if you do click on like, for example, like the Seaford Viking on my desk, like mm -hmm. there's a hyperlink that'll give you like the Seaford webpage. Um, I do have on the little uh, bulletin board to the right, um, I do have Word Reference, I do have Edpuzzle, and I do have Microsoft Teams, um, where the students would be able to click on, click on those hyperlinks um, and get information that they need. And then underneath the whiteboard, I actually made um, a Google Class app um, where the kids could actually um, save that onto their home screen, which gives them information. I know I also, besides Teams, I use Remind um, to be able to give them information um, as like little reminders of things. Um, it also has like different links um, in, in regards to getting onto Teams if they, if they have an issue on their laptop. So I'm always trying to think ahead. Um, I am not an ENL teacher, but I always thought that that was like a cool feature for maybe an ENL teacher to have possibly um, really to kind of get that communication going with the parents that they could save something like that on the home screen of their phones. I know the ENL students or the ELs that we have in our school district, um, they are very personable with uh, the teachers that we have and they're always on, um, you know, one on one type of like text message or mm -hmm. some sort of a phone call. So that's something that um, it was always good for, for those kids to have. Um, so this was just one example of something that I've had in my classroom. Uh, and every so often I'll give it to them. And I just like what Ashley said, I'll change it up. Um, I haven't done one yet um, in regards to, I wanna do something like with a gallery walk um, for Dia de los Muertos, which is coming up for, for them to be able to click on it and it's just interactive. So it's a good feature at home as opposed to giving some sort of like asynchronous learning. Um, if you go to the next slide, I think there was another one. Mm -hmm. like, this is just a, a little bigger version of my virtual expectations of what I was looking for, um, for them um, both for, for at home. I do uh, have my students that are both in class and at home uh, log into our Teams calls at the same time so that our students can communicate with the students that are at home because I've always felt that that social emotional piece is huge and I don't want those students to get lost um, in a cloud. So this was something that I gave as an expectation for everybody. Um, and then if you go on to the next slide. Um, I do a lot of these for do nows, um, where as students are signing in, which that seems to sometimes be like the hardest, um, while the kids are coming into the class, I use like um, a little bit emoji slide. Uh, where I give them a do now could be specific activity. Um, and it's more of like a kind of getting, you know, everybody together waiting for them to join. Um, because like I said, sometimes the, uh, the group at home might log in faster than the kids that are walking in the halls or vice versa. So I usually use this as like a little starter activity. Um, I believe there was another piece that went with this because this was for my level two class. So they were, um, we were learning about famous people. So they had to describe the famous people um, and so forth. So this was another slide. And then lastly, I believe there was one more. Um, I did this in the beginning to really focus on like the social emotional piece with them. Um, I'm a very personable social teacher um, and always lively and energetic. And I, my biggest fear going into this school year was that how do I do that in a hybrid model? Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that I started with was they had to make their own virtual locker um, at the high school level, the secondary level. I think we all know that we're not allowed to, uh, or the students are not allowed to have lockers this year. So um, I yeah. made a Bitmoji locker where they were able to um, pick out their favorite things um, and then they were able to describe it. And I did a follow up with this where they had to present their, uh, their Casillero Virtual um, on a Flipgrid assignment. Um, so these are ways that, in which I've been using my Bitmoji classroom and I'm still kind of diving into like other ways to be able to use it because they do think it's fun and they do think it's something that's different. So just to kind of get the motivation going. All right. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, it was really great. Um, you know, and we wanted to point out just a few of the connections that we noticed to the three eyes. So um, first, we, we noticed that, the, you know, the virtual expectations provide really clear guidelines for accountable and respectful interactions um, within your classroom. Um, the Agana Ora, or the, the Do Now activities that you had, um, you know, allow students to independently initiate 
their learning while providing time for other students to prepare and join the class. And then finally, the this casillero virtual or the virtual locker activity um, provides an opportunity for students to express their identity and to cultivate cultural responsiveness um, and sustaining practices in your classroom. So you've done an amazing job of incorporating um, each of these meaningful elements to your Bitmoji classroom. So thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. Thank and you. I love thank the you point. for having me. Thank you for being here. I love the point that you made that, you know, in the absence of actual lockers this year, we don't realize how um, how important that be. And for many of our, our students, that's a rite of passage, you know, especially for freshmen coming in, perhaps having a locker um, <clears throat> for the first time or just having that personal space in school, that little home base. So that's a great a great way to bring that into this this virtual classroom. So you mentioned that you're not supporting English learners, but you're supporting language learners. And this is really, you know, the space where we're talking about all of these different aspects. So um, when we were preparing the session, we were very excited to see how you were integrating this with Microsoft Teams, because as you pointed out, many educators, many school districts are using Google Classroom. So we wanted to see how this was working with a different platform. So that was great. Thank you for that. And of course, I have to add, on a personal note that I know a student who was extremely proud to share his locker with me. Um, so my son Aiden is very fortunate to be in Patricia's class. And I can't tell you the, um, the pride he had in sharing that with me. And I love to see how much he represented his identity in it, but it wasn't just, again, the activity of creating his locker, there was that whole written piece with it that he read to me so beautifully. So a great opportunity to just um, respond to a writing prompt, to be using the language in a different way, and um, an opportunity again to express his identity within your learning space. So thank you so much for that. We're so happy you could be here with us. Thank you. And Patricia, I just want to ask you, now, I know for many of us, um, you know, the, the quarantine provided this silver lining of giving us time to explore different tools, um, different ways of supporting our virtual classrooms. So this is the first year that you were using Bitmoji Classroom. I'm not sure if you had mentioned so, that. So yeah, so um, back in April, I, I joined, actually for any of you guys that are on Facebook, there, uh, there's a Facebook group called Bitmoji Craze for Educators that has a wealth of information um, again, a lot of the information that I had received was a lot from Google schools and Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. um, but then I just figured out a way that, you know, Google Slides is very much like PowerPoint and that you can convert PowerPoint to Google Slides and vice versa. Um, so I'm a total nerd and I sat there and I kind of <laughs> played around with it um, and, and it worked. And so for me on, on Teams, when I do post something like this on Teams, um, like this, obviously I had given to my students as the locker was like a PowerPoint slide. So I gave them the PowerPoint slide that was editable for them. Um, but if I want them to look at the specific slide itself um, on Teams, it's not as friendly, I guess, as Google Classroom. So what I have to do is I have to share it with my students um, okay. as a PowerPoint where they'll have like the hyperlinks. And then I also add a JPEG image so that they could visually see it to grab their attention. Um, so that's like one way that, that I've been able to, to work with them and, um, and so forth. And, and it does, it, 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 seems, it seems to work. Um, I'm hoping that I could find out more as we go on, but that was around like April and then May, um, I did make a little video on Loom to kind of show like how I did it um, from a Teams point of view or Microsoft point of view. Um, and, and that's kind of where we are. So I have been using it this year, um, mm -hmm. uh, with my classes. Yes. Now, when Eric and I were just doing, because we are also nerds. So of course <laughs> we approach this from a whole research angle too. And, um, a lot of the literature that we came across pointed to the fact that, um, using platforms such as Bitmoji Classroom really 
increases student engagement. And whenever there's an increase in student engagement, that's a positive thing because now they have access to so much more, uh, so much more of the learning that's going on. So just from your experience, since you have incorporated Bitmoji Classroom, have you seen how students are responding to it? Do you, do you see a difference or an impact in student engagement? I think I do. Um, I mean, I'm, there's, you know, there's some students that maybe not so much, but mm -hmm. um, I think most kids in the beginning were, they were very uh, happy to see something. It's, it's visually appealing. It's engaging. Absolutely. Um, and, and, it's, and it's welcoming. And I feel like that's something that our kids from K to 12 need the most right now. Um, yes. Because that kind of comes first before the academics component. And then when mm -hmm. you put them together, it's more of a of a win win. So I, I even my AP students, mm -hmm. um, you know, enjoy this. And every one of my kids' grades uh, grades nine through twelve had to make a, a virtual locker. Mm -hmm. uh, and some kids went full force with it, um, and some maybe not so much. But they were very proud of their work at the end because just yes, just like I said, like they had to make their locker, and then they wrote about it, and then they had to do a flip grid to actually speak about it. Yes, so. yeah. So you incorporated, you know all the modalities of, of, of language, which is just fabulous. Love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Does anyone have any questions for Patricia? You can either unmute yourself to share or you can throw it into the chat if you have any comments, questions. We have thank yous coming in. Um, loving the, every, the, the, the uh, virtual locker is really just such a great idea. So we have compliments coming in for that. Um, I don't see any questions, but remember, um, Patricia's email is also up on her slide. So if you think of something afterwards and you want to continue this conversation, you can reach out to Patricia to, um, to discuss this further. But we are now going to return. We're moving on in our tour. And for our next stop, we'll visit an elementary building in the West Hempstead School District. So we have a Bitmoji classroom that was shared by ENL teacher Erin Holtkamp. Erin is currently supporting ELLs in integrated fourth and fifth grade classes in a hybrid setting where she has some students attending face-to-face -face on a daily basis while other students are only attending remotely. Erin, are you here with us? I am. Hello, Hi, Erin. We're so glad you could join us. Are you ready to give us a tour of your classroom? I am. I am. Okay, so we'll make you a co-host and you can take Thank over. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so you can see my little uh, bitmoji. Where'd you go? Where'd it go? Hold on. Um, so you have the presentation up, Kelly? Where'd it go? Oh, oh do you want... Yeah, keep the presentation up. Okay, That's got good. it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, so you can go to the next slide. I don't know if I can. Okay, so this is um, kind of my cover page of my Bitmoji classroom. I have a standalone um, with three students. On day A, I have one student who's in school and two students who are uh, virtual. And on B days, I have two students in school and one student who's virtual. Um, so I quickly had to think of a way to keep everyone engaged, knowing um, luck was not working with me to keep everyone on the same A or B day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had created this during our lockdown and um, I am a nerd as well. And once you start <laughs> it's like that never ending rabbit hole as we mm -hmm. all know. Um, so I found some really fun stuff. It was a lot busier when I first created it during um, virtual learning, you know, during the quarantine, but I simplified it, you know, for, for my L's uh, for this year. So um, when we, when I first introduced the classroom, I, it was, there were no words. It was just today is good morning. And that was it. Um, and just some flowers and the carpet and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the for one of the first activities we did was to label everything. So if you look around, um, I did not do those. They did. I just put Mrs. Whole Camp slash Rockstar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they had to either write it in. I have a Spanish speak, two Spanish speakers and a French speaker. Um, uh, my French. An English speaker is awesome where she actually can spell most of the words in French on her own, but I taught them how to use Google Translate um, and even just try to spell it on their own and I would help them. I can help them in Spanish. So they did all of this. So they broke up um, any items 
and I would add a slide and I would switch out the items. So um, you can see on here, I start every day, I give them, today is October 23rd, 2020, good morning, happy Friday, buenos dias, feliz viernes, and then I don't speak French, but I usually leave Friday blank and the little girl always fills it in as we're starting to talk. So mm -hmm. they take turns reading this and it's just a like brief way to let them know what today is. Next slide. So you can move on to the next slide, Kelly. Okay. Oh, we just wanted to Here point out too that, um, oh, well, I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> That's okay. So what I did is I linked, um, I don't know if I can click on it. Uh, if Erica, you can you click? Me, Kelly, you can click on, on me or the, or the thing you linked and you'll see my link pop up on the bottom. Yes, I'm going to see if it all opens. Oh, there it is. So here it comes. So, th so this is kind of how I start my day with them. Um, and you can go to the second slide as soon as it decides to load, of course. That's the that's the one caveat here with um, the Bitmoji Classroom is that it, it really, really takes a lot of bandwidth when you're using multiple slides with multiple mm. images and, and all, you know, and the GIFs and the videos. Um, so, you know, it just takes a little bit longer to load, but it, it's well worth it, I think. Yeah, this presentation has it. so many contributions from all of our presenters, so. And I do try to have it up before they walk in, so mm -hmm. I, they don't have that wait time. Um, but you can see on the second slide, everything's blank. But I do highlight the words for the days of the week. They don't know them yet. They don't know how to spell them yet. So they're there for them. So I highlight Friday um, and they take turns. So I'll say, okay, this student you do today is October. What? Do you remember from the last slide? If you don't remember, what can you do? Oh, I, I can click back because they have their own copies. Mm -hmm. um, so they have their computer open and whether they're in person or at home, we talk it out. And then I give them a minute, they fill it all out and then um, they take turns reading it out loud. And they've really gotten very good at it. And um, they really enjoy doing this part and they get excited to take turns. So Erin, are you a Google school also? Do you use Google yes. Classroom? Okay. Yep. Google Meets, Google Classroom, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can go to the next slide, Kelly. We did seasons uh, when fall changed. So um, we talk about this every day because they uh, haven't really memorized or understood the seasons just yet. Um, and we talk about them in their first language as well. Uh, not all of them experienced or have experienced all the seasons. So that's exciting for them. Um, okay, next slide. So this is a fun one. This started out with just fall and autumn. Um, if you see it in French underneath, the word autumn is uh, very close, close to our word in autumn and my French student picked up on that very quickly. So she loves telling me that the other word for fall is autumn. So um, what I've been doing is adding a uh, pick or you know some type of clip art every day and they kind of have to find it and they get very excited and they try to think of what it is in English. Um, they have never been able to remember the word in English but it's there. So they usually know it in their first language. And I say, okay, so what do you do now? And they usually go to Google Translate and they'll try to say it in English. And then I usually tell them what it is and then we label it. So today it, it was back, it will be back. <laughs> but they love this. And then we go over the other ones. So they learn a little bit about you know our culture. Right. Okay, so um, if you go back right after the fall slide, this is where I talk about what we're doing. So these are kind of my targets. We're practicing some letter identification, whatever we're doing that day. And then I put in Spanish and I put it in French. And um, I usually I just give them a minute where they can absorb what we're doing in their first language. Mm -hmm. um, it just helps. You can go to the next slide. These are uh, just some more classroom labeled items. I have not taken them out because I want them to practice using these words while we're in the classroom. And randomly, I might say, oh, wait, I have to go turn on the, what, what's that called again? And I'll walk over to it and I'll say, look on the slide and they have to try to find light switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can go down. These are more, so you can see all the items that I added, um, a map, a classroom, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. So now this is kind of the fun one. So Kelly, what you're going to do is use your 
arrow after I talk about this slide to go right pretty quickly. But I, this is where I say, okay, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna go to Google Classroom and I say, ready, set, go. So Kelly, just click right quickly. Go ahead, <laughs> quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your favorite part. Uh -huh. And I will tell you um, in the beginning, they were like, do it again, do it again, do it again. And then they started moving me and moving me around the kids at home. And I said, who's moving me? Why am I moving? And they would move me around. So I gave them a few minutes. I was like, fine, move me around. And um, I realized that they needed that time to just laugh and play. I said, go ahead, move me around. I'll fix myself. So you do have to be a little bit careful. It, I made a copy of this, my original one, and I make random copies so that I will always have it in case they completely delete all my stuff. <laughs> I won't really delete it. Um, so that's the good news. But I created that by just uh, finding different bitmojis and you put them into the same slide a little bit apart from each other. And I just did what Kelly did. You click the arrow and it looks like I'm running across on jumping on a Jeep and landing in my chair. So um, yeah, so that's that. Um, the next thing I have is I created a Bitmoji breakout room. So you can click on that. That's right there. So this is one of them. Where, where'd it go? Try to click on that link. There it is. Okay. So I've done this for all my co-teaching classrooms. Um, I don't need it for my standalone, uh, obviously, for the most part. But um, every classroom has five doors, and I got all my teachers' bitmojis. This is an ICT classroom, so there's three teachers. There's even two TAs in there. But I just did the three teachers, um, the first three doors. Um, so if you click on one, one of them, it would open, if you click on the Bitmoji and it says, click on the Bitmoji to get into the classroom. You can just hover over the Bitmoji um, and you see the meet, it's right there. So I can say, okay, Johnny, Susie, and Charlie go into Ms. Boshnak's breakout room one. And then, you know, my students meet me in my room in number three. Um, and it's, We've just started using it in some classes more than others. Some teachers are a little wary of using it, um, but it's been great for me. So what I do is I come in and the teacher will be talking. I wait for the pause and I'll say, okay. And I jump in front of the camera and I tell my students, meet me in my room. Um, and I've really just been using it the past two weeks and I've felt very successful. It's like a check-in for me. So I don't have to be on it for 40 minutes. But if I get 10 minutes with my students to talk about what the teacher just taught them, and it's usually the five minutes of when I walk in, so I know what they should be doing. Um, even if I miss the beginning of it, I know what they should be doing, or I have them tell me. Um, the verbalization that they're able to do with me and with each other is phenomenal. So it's a small breakout room. We have to wear headphones. Um, I give my students headphones. If they don't, I just have them keep their volume low and sit in a desk closer to me. I don't sit close to my kids. I just am not comfortable. So it's six feet, but this works. So we're still having small group and six feet apart with our masks. Mm -hmm. So um, I highly recommend it. This was created. Um, Katie D. Gregorio taught us how to do it. You do mm -hmm. it through Google Calendar and you set it up that way. That way it's always open. So it's not, you don't have to start it. Um, it's always ready, it's ready to go. So one thing that's not good is we did find out that some students were going in without us once they realized that they could. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were doing like a Google meet and writing like, oh, the teacher's so mean and whatever. So. Um, yes, there's a problem with kids going in unsupervised. So we just found this out like two days ago. Yeah, today's Friday. Um, and I was in a panic. Now I was taught this, so I did it the way I was supposed to. Um, mm -hmm. I got very upset about it because first of all, it was students that I never expected, which it's always that way. Um, and they went in, you could see how long they went in for and all that. So um, that was an issue, but we've, we've decided that um, we'll, we'll monitor it. It really is such a great tool. We need it. We don't have something what we have nothing else that we can control at this time. 
um, the link in our Google Classroom, that is controlled by us. But when we do it this way, it's not. And it's unfortunate that Google hasn't fixed it. But uh, our tech people are in touch with Google and we're trying to fix it where we have more control and the teacher has to be there. Um, the only caveat would be like, if I want partner work and I don't want to be in there, I want them to work themselves. Maybe I just have to allow it first. So I think there, there is supposed to be a fix for this. There is supposed to be Google breakout rooms. It hasn't come out yet. So this is our workaround. Um, mm -hmm. It hasn't been anything major. So we've been given the go ahead to continue using it. And um, I happen to love it. I haven't had a major issue, but as a parent, it makes me a little nervous, mm -hmm. of course. Um, you know, I think everybody gets nervous. So I wish we could use Zoom where you can lock things out, but even Zoom has issues and then there's WebEx. There's so many, we all know, we've all been on all these different things, but nothing really seems perfect just yet. So I do love this. I love the Bitmojis. The kids get excited about it. And for the most, most part, except for two days ago, until two days ago, <laughs> it was the best thing ever. <laughs> um, we didn't have any problems and the kids were working collaborative and speaking and I was listening to them. They were reading together. Like it's just phenomenal things happening. Mm -hmm. um, what one problem I found without these rooms is if I'm in the classroom and I log into every meet, like if they're having a Google meet as soon, I don't know if everyone else has this problem, but as soon as I unmute myself and talk, it gives a screeching noise throughout the classroom and it's awful. And I can't say to the teacher, mute yourself, because they're usually across the room or doing something else. So I, I, I can't participate. And then if I type in the chat, not all the kids are looking in the chat. The kids in the classroom don't see what I'm writing. So I really need this as my resource to reach my kids. Because whole class, I always get feedback. Whether I have headphones, I mute. It doesn't matter what I did. It's not working. Yeah. And I am interrupting the teacher to say, okay, can you tell my kids to go to whatever? Now it's becoming more of a routine when they say, oh, welcome, Mrs. Holcamp. The kids will say, oh, do we come to your room? So I'm feeling hopeful that that will become a routine for them. Yeah, um, I really love how, how you're utilizing this Bitmoji classroom, both, both for your standalone and the integrated e classes. Um, and, you know, I just like how you, how you have already shared with us just how um, beneficial this has been for, for your student engagement um, in, in both settings. Thank you. Yeah. So it's been great. I, I really have enjoyed it. <laughs> and, and I just love, um, you know, it's like a different spin on the use of the lockers. I love how you have these multiple modes of interaction supported through your Bitmoji classroom. Um, and, and thank you for being so honest in sharing with us the challenges that have yep. come up. Um, just, you know, that problem solving of how to address these things, because we, we do want to incorporate all of these things. We do want to engage our students in in you know through all these different uh, platforms, but you know we're finding out it's a learning process and we're learning as we go problems that we need to address. So thank you so much. Um, and now just because you you are using this to facilitate your co-taught classes, how has that been working for you? How has that impacted your your co-teaching or your collaborative partnerships? So the, uh, my co-taught classes, um, I do struggle with planning time. I think every e mm -hmm. teacher says that. Um, the virtual hybrid model has made it extra challenging. I think um, everything takes twice or three times as long. Every lesson, every activity, everything we plan. Um, so I feel very much like I'm behind the eight ball every day and I'm being completely honest and I am texting teachers, you know, way too, uh, I have not, not enough time to know what's happening. So um, we're working on ways to fix that, whether we get a half a day to plan together and plan two weeks out, a week out, I don't care what it is, but I need more time. What they've been doing, which has been working is they share their slides with me. So when they share, if they do Google slides, it's all of mine do. They share them with me and I go in and I put translations, I put links, I put um, lots and lots of pictures, I take stuff mm -hmm. out and I edit it for my kids. So I know whether I'm standing in the room or not, their support is sitting there for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I come in, I can point out where they need to go, what they need to look at. 
so the slides have helped tremendously. Uh, and thank goodness my teachers are good at that. And for the mm -hmm. ones who aren't as good, I don't mind sharing the slides I have from another room and making it fit for them. And so I, right. I'm, I'm big on helping them if they need it. Because everybody's still learning that, yeah. and we're all teaching each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, does anyone have any other questions for Erin? I'm just going to take a look in the chat real quick to see if anything has come in. Everybody wants to share. So if anybody, I know, um, I think Ashley and Patricia have already shared. So Erin, um, if you'd like to share, you can throw that in the chat as well. Or we can you know, certainly uh, follow up afterwards. Um, that's the one great thing about um, bringing teachers into this forum is that really everybody's typically very generous. And as you said, Erin, we're all trying to build each other's capacity. So this is a great forum for doing that. So thank you so much. So we are now returning to the Long Beach School District. Um, we have two more ENL teachers who unfortunately were unable to get coverage for their classes, another one of our realities. So they couldn't be here with us to join us for the session, but they still wanted to share how they're using Bitmoji Classroom. So first we'll be watching a, a brief video that was submitted to us by Maria Hartman, who is an 11th and 12th grade English and ENL teacher in Long Beach. And her current mode of instruction is a combination of face-to-face, -face, full remote and hybrid all concurrently. So let's take a look at Maria's video together. Hello, my name is Maria Hartman and I'm an 11th and 12th grade English teacher at Long Beach High School with dual certification in TESOL. So I have the privilege of teaching our English language learners. This year, in addition to my integrated classes, I have one sheltered ENL class. I'm going to show you our Bitmoji classroom. I learned how to create a Bitmoji classroom in an in-service class run by my director, Dr. Lorraine Radice. I used Google Slides, and after choosing a floor and wall background, I chose objects to make our space easy to navigate and hopefully welcoming to the students. I chose to include the text that we'll be reading this year as a class. Clap when you land, speak graphic novel, and free lunch are all linked to summaries of each text. The House on Mango Street is the only book here that is not linked to a summary. It was in the beginning of the year, but once we started reading it, I chose to link this book to our class slides. Our class slides, as you can see, takes us through a daily routine of what we're learning. This way, the students can go into the Bitmoji classroom, click on the house on Mango Street and get the lesson for each day. These slides will update as I update them every day. In addition to the texts, I chose to add some other academic links to the slide as well. For example, I added this link up here to the public library system. This actually goes to a link from the Long Beach Public Library to the Nassau Library System digital card application page. We actually accessed this link on the first day of school and every student was able to sign up for a digital library card. This way they can take out books and read them online. This will be especially helpful if we ever need to go fully remote again. Moving down the classroom, I have my desk with my computer and as you can see, some other objects. I have this sticker right here on my desk that says NYS Regents. This sticker on the desk leads students to the New York State Regents website so they can access practice tests. And if we move over here, I've linked the headphones to a website called Digital Book where students can search for trending books to listen to online. If students click on the newspapers, they'll head over to the Long Beach Patch newspaper. Where if they click right here on the Long Beach sticker, 
that will take them to the City of Long Beach website. I'm sure you're familiar with this little green bird right up here. My students and I use this very often. This is the symbol for Duolingo. We all signed up for Duolingo the first week of school and actually follow each other. I can track their progress in English and they can track mine when I'm learning Spanish. In addition to the academic sites, the students can access info on how to stay healthy and instructions on making their own masks by clicking on either the tissues or the mask. I also have included some fun and relaxing sites such as online coloring. If they click on this tin of colored pencils, they'll get to an online coloring page where they can actually color pages online or print them out at home or in school to do some coloring. Many of my students play soccer and they all watch soccer. So I included the soccer ball down here, which takes them right to Major League Soccer website where they can get updates. We'll do a lot of journaling this year in class. So if they click on this journal right here, they'll get a lot of different journal prompts that they can work on on their own. If they click here, on this laptop, they'll get to see a trailer of a movie that we'll watch this year. Lastly, if they click me, they'll be brought right back to our Google Classroom where they can access all of their work, their assignments, their grades, and obviously all of the information that I upload into the stream. I hope this was helpful. Please reach out to me if I can be of any help when you create your own Bitmoji classroom. Have a great day. So as Maria shared in her video, in addition to providing academic and linguistic support, she also addresses, again, student wellness with resources linked to the mask and the tissue icons, as well as student interests as, you know, that one representation by, you know, the soccer ball. And of course, the ease of returning to the Google Classroom by clicking on her Bitmoji. So we want to be able to, you know, to make sure that our, our students are able to easily navigate through the different platforms that we're using. Um, we have Maria's email address up on the slide. So if you have any questions for Maria, you can reach out to her via email as well at uh, mahartman at lbeach.org. Right. And so um, next we have a uh, Bitmoji classroom that was shared by Brianna Carnival, who also teaches 9th through 12th grade ENL at Long Beach High School. Uh, Brianna says that currently all of her students mm -hmm are present for face-to-face -face instruction each day. Um, and when she shared her slide with us, she explained that she only sees L's for standalone ENL. So since she is not with her, um, you know, English language learners in their content area classes, she has provided the support they will need to be successful and independent learners in those classes. As we've seen in other Bitmoji classrooms, uh, Brianna has included many icons that hyperlink to some of her most frequently used websites or tools to promote student independence. And again, we'll notice that in addition to supporting all of the content areas, you know, math, science, social studies, she also brings in that cell component, which has been a recurring theme in all of these Bitmoji classrooms uh, by providing links to crafting activities and a yoga YouTube video that you see in her classroom. So earlier, Patricia shared with us the virtual locker activity um, and in included it in her Bitmoji classroom. And as you can see here, Brianna has included a similar um, activity for her owls. And again, this is not only a great icebreaker activity, but it builds community and encourages interaction um, and cultivates culturally responsive and sustaining learning environments. So, um, you know, it, it has that provides those opportunities for students to express their identity and um, to make choices about how they wish to represent themselves and the things they value um, to their teachers and their classmates. Brianna models her, um, her own completed locker for her students, sharing items that represent some of her favorite things. And then she accompanies this activity with a scaffolded script to support students in sharing their virtual lockers with other members of their learning space. Again, an activity like this 
as Erica said, really builds that sense of community for the whole group, as well as that sense of identity for each individual student. Right. So then, you know, Brianna also uses her Bitmoji space to provide some technical support to facilitate student participation, um, such as this visually supported direction for adding and resizing images. We know that while they may be tech savvy, sometimes they still need a little bit of scaffolding. Um, and, you know, she turns the activity over to students to complete and explore on their own independently. And then here we have actually the blank template, um, which she sends to her students. You'll notice that she does provide several bullets to, to remind the students of some of the um, different preferences that they can include on their locker. And so we are um, nearing the end of our time together. So if you do have any questions um, or, or comments, you can share them in the chat at this time. Um, you can also unmute yourself if you would rather just make a comment, ask a question. We welcome any discussion at this time. I'm not seeing anything come in. So we have one more important um, item to share with you before you go. I'm just going to um, throw a link into the chat now. As you can see up on the screen, it is um, an evaluation form for today's meeting. The link is there now. So before we go, we, we just wanna share that link with you. It's our new evaluation protocol. And um, we're asking that you please take a moment, open up that Google form and just complete the evaluation about today's session. This is you know, information that helps us to plan out future sessions. You can use it as an opportunity to indicate uh, topics that you'd like to see addressed in future webinars or PD, uh, or just to follow up any, any commentary that you may have about today's session. Right, so um, we wanna thank everyone for participating. We hope that you found it helpful. Um, thank you again to our teachers who shared with us today and for all our participants. Um, a recording of today's session will be available on our YouTube channel. And again, you can reach us at any time via our email, telephone, um, you know, please remember to visit our website frequently for any updates um, and follow us on Twitter. Be well and thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.